but I only have one of each of them, but I'll give them to you. Um, do you know that last week we had a life-sized, um, yeah, what game? Candyland? I heard about that. Life-sized in life the library, size. yes. Which was really, apparently, I wasn't there, but apparently it was really a lot of fun, and we still have pieces left over for the boards. So I guess that we will be repeating that. Um, we have a book dis we have book discussions every month. We have a game called Play Magic. You've heard of the game Magic. Kids, the kids certainly know it. Um, that's going to be an event at the library this week. And we have it next week. We're going to do beaded ornaments, beading crafts, all kinds of stuff like that for the kids. And the thing that I am most excited about is this coming Saturday, we're having a workshop to build little free libraries funded by a grant from AARP Vermont. They are providing the teacher, or the facilitator, who is a shop teacher in Bethel. They are providing the parts, the pieces, the hardware. And all people have to do with teams, they come in, they put them together, and they can take them home then, and they can decorate them over the winter, or they can come in in the spring. And we'll do a combined event with Chandler to um, paint them at Chandler's messy room. So. The library's a hop in place. Got any questions? Here's some information. Oh, before I want to just put in a plug for the library census grant that you're going to be discussing. Mini grant. Okay. Mike. Your turn. Um, Michael Hovenbrand, Randolph Hove Fire Department. Uh, I've handed out to each of the board members into Adolfo. Um, a program we've been uh, working on for the last two months, a junior fire program. In, in development of this, we contacted uh, VSFA, uh, NDFC, OSHA, VLCT, and NFPA in order to develop this document. So I got through the alphabet soup. The, uh, uh, basically, this document uh, gives permission and guidelines for 16 and 17 year olds to participate in fire activities. It goes over what they're permitted to, to do and prohibited from doing. It talks about how they are a junior member of the department and held to the same uh, regulations that regular members are, but there are some restrictions to that. Um, and this will be an appendix to our bylaws, and I just wanted you guys to have it and, and provide any feedback that you may have or questions, and hopefully we can get this enacted soon. Each Randolph participated in the development of this, and their document will look the same except for different station picture and, and uh, they will say East instead of Village. And you're looking for us to adopt this in December? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we'd like to get it going for the uh, second semester of the school year. Uh, if you adopt it in December, we can uh, start recruiting right away and, and look to get kids in. We are limiting the number for uh, between two and four uh, for the number of participants, and we'll see how it goes. It is a uh, um, combination of calendar year and school year as far as enrollments. Uh, just because they're in, they're not guaranteed a second year. Obviously, they get the same character standards, standards and uh, attendance standards that regular membership does. Any interest from Randolph Center? They did not want to participate in this. Okay, just curious. I believe the committee also coordinated with the local high school for information too. So. Yeah, we've reached out to them already, um, and uh, some of the information is here is uh, based on those conversations. So, Preston's between now and December, we should get to Mike in advance, so he's because we want the answers to those to be able to vote on December, yeah. Yeah. rather than uh, giving you the questions in December. If it's just a question about policy, we can answer right away. If it's a question about addressing certain things, we can take care of them and, and get them incorporated as appropriate. 
I'll, I could ask if the board would choose. We could we could choose to try to amend the agenda and include it on there, so we could the board can have a discussion about it as opposed to um, speaking to Mike now. But <coughs> there's no need then. Maybe we should read it first. Yeah. Okay. I like to read through it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Any more public comment? Approval of the agenda. Let me ask the board to make one uh, this one, one change to the agenda, which would be to add an item to old business, and the item would be uh, economic development committee request. Uh, this is a, a follow-up from the board from a previous uh, presentation from the economic development committee. Your old business uh, C, possibly. Maybe if somebody got busy writing beforehand, it wouldn't have had to be added to the agenda. But no finger pointing. That's the cemetery plot. Oh, uh, oh yes, and I'm sorry. And then also under consent calendar, a cemetery plot sale, uh, which could be bad if we don't. Discussing at the board of the sale. I'll make a motion for pre agenda with modifications. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carries. Consent calendar. We have the minutes, warrants, and the cemetery box sale. Review of audit service proposals. Uh, the town uh, and the finance director have um, had ongoing conversations about uh, placing our audit services up for RFP. Um, that was performed earlier this year. We received three responses to the um, RFP that was sent out. Um, both uh, Cliff and I uh, both agreed that of the three, the firm uh, Batchelder Associates uh, was the firm that we chose to recommend to the select board. It was also uh, the least uh, costly of the three, but it wasn't just necessarily based on price. Uh, it was a firm that our finance director felt most comfortable with after speaking with all three over the telephone and then also checking uh, references for all three firms. In your packets, uh, there are letters for all um, three firms that submitted their proposal for or a response to the RFP. Do you know what they mean when they say the proposals for 17, 750, not including a single audit? A single audit would be extra. Um, did they give us a quote on that? They did, and I don't believe. It was included in the materials given to uh, the board in their packets. If a single audit is required, our bill will be 6000 That's with Sullivan, though, I think, right? Oh, yeah. I can say that um, our finance director felt confident that even with the, the extra potential charges that may not have been included in the lowest bidder, uh, he felt confident that even then, because we're now improving our reporting system, we'll have more more skill within the finance department that we won't require the, or, or require as much of the extra hours as, as we may have had in the past. Sorry. <clears throat> so it should still come in as the cheapest option. Would be the cheapest option. And the most comfortable. And the most comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Is this going out as a five-year contract? I believe it was a three-year, one, I think it says 
through 24. It's a five year contract. Five year. 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. With the understanding that at that point we would again go out to RFP. We just want to make sure that we we keep fresh eyes on our on our finances as opposed to having the same for for extended periods of time. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but fresh eyes may catch other things that may not have otherwise been caught. I do know that from our previous audit to our most recent audit, the the usual number of um, changes that needed to take place or reporting that were extra was roughly in the mid-20s, early to mid-20s of changes that needed to occur. Uh, this most recent audit under Cliff, that number was reduced to four. So there were only four additional journal entries that needed to be made, and our usual previously were in the low to mid-20s, so already we're improving. That's great. <coughs> I'll move that we accept the proposal from Dr. Elder Associates to perform the audit for Randolph for the five year period um, from 2020 to 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Assembly permit application for the Winter Festival. Winter parade. Winter parade. Winter parade. Winter parade. Winter parade. That was, uh, I was skipping something. Else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was uh, an error that I actually I, I, I it was made by my staff and I forgot to ask for the change during the approval of the agenda. But you got it right here. It says Winter Lights Parade. Yeah. Winter Lights Parade. Correct. Yeah. So <laughs> believe it's all on me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a message about that. Okay. <laughs> No, okay, he'll pick it up. He'll get it. <laughs> okay. Can we about the same as last year? Yeah, so we decided to um, having a nice long conversation with the sheriffs. Um, we decided to keep the same kind of format, same route, um, but um, it all depends on the number of entries. And we are hoping this year if we have a good number of entries that we do it, it two loops um, and uh, that all we are going to work hard on getting enough volunteers about at least 12 to 15 volunteers that will help with uh, traffic control to be able to be able to do a two loop uh, so the sheriff's all involved they're all okay it's just we need to have the volunteers in place to make sure that the crowd there's no gaps between the floats or you know um, so, because if there's a long gap, then that people think it's over, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, making sure that it is all timely uh, run, and so those are kind of the biggest thing. Um, and, um, and we're slowly growing, so, you know, we're, we're not a 4th of July parade by any means. Um, if we get, you know, uh, the sheriff did ask me to, in, to add a plan B, just in case we get a, a bigger number of entries, um, but I don't think we'll get there this year. So we're pretty confident that we'll probably add, you know, maybe four or five new ones. Um, and so, therefore, I think sticking to the same route and doing it two laps, uh, that'll be pretty cool for the citizens here to able to enjoy. And we were talking to chefs, right? With that, or? Uh, and my proposal is two to three, depending on how much we raise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're closing. So we're closing summer in Salisbury. Yeah, same as last year. Yeah. And then Main Street down until they turn off School Street. Yeah, right by the library. So it's just that little okay. rectangle. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> uh, the motion to approve the assembly permit for the winter lights parade. Yeah, and after the parade, we'll have our, our tree lighting with Santa there for about an hour, and then there's lots of other festivities going around the town. So it's pretty cool. Motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Proposal for tree removal. 
This is part of an ongoing conversation. Um, yeah. And so, so we, we, we thought we'd just bring to the select board an option that uh, I know it had expressed it would have liked to, to see more of. So uh, Heidi has done a lot of legwork on this. I've talked to a lot, a lot of people, um, the Garden Club. Um, we know we have to do a better job in that circle there. Um, since I've been here, all I hear is about this tree that is slowly dying. Um, and we want to make this uh, a really nice area to, to create a great uh, tree lighting day. Um, the Garden Club is very excited about it. Um, there's more opportunities to, to help that area. Um, in doing so, bring that down, we can uh, create uh, in the spring a nice uh, Earth Day to bring it back, um, help them. They are in desperate need of help. Um, so I'm more than happy to coordinate with them to, to do an Earth Day to get it back to where we need it in the spring after the snow melts. Um, adding a couple of summer events such as weeding, some community service projects. Um, they really want, they said that not much grows there. This, the soil's not the best. Um, but um, they're looking into maybe providing some pollination and some little things that, so they can educate on different plants that pollinate. Um, they have a lot of some great ideas um, that they can incorporate. Bring bees in. Yes. They have some really uh, neat ideas and some stuff that we can incorporate with our camp in the summertime to come and do some community service as well. Um, and they really liked about having a new tree every year. They actually are in favor of not having a tree during the springtime or something there because that lets them you know, be creative uh, with that space. Um, and actually also motivated them to do a little better job because they've known that um, they haven't had the good help to really spruce it up in the spring and the summertime. Um, that is a main focal point, especially now that the building in front, it's all done. Um, so we really want to spruce up that area. So that's kind of the motivation um, a lot of people are, are interested in donating trees every year. I know Mount Pillar and other towns um, do that every season. Um, trees come, we have a lot of trees, a lot of access to different Christmas trees. And I think it's a neat way to incorporate it as, you know, please submit your tree this year and see if you get selected. Um, 40 acres, Justin Ford has uh, committed to every year to go get that tree. Um, he has a logger trail, trailer. Um, he's willing to do that um, every year to pick it up and install the tree, um, so that's a great thing. Um, but to take it to take it down, there will be a charge from the 40 acres. Um, so that's I think it's fair. Um, they have all the right equipment to do this, and so it's kind of something we wanted to throw it out there to see what you guys all think. So the plan would be the tree stays this year. We could well, incorporate the cotton. We did, um, Justin Ford is also an arborist. There is another Y in there. Mm -hmm. So if you cut it and, and you need to cut that, it's going to actually be a big hole in right. that side. So right. it's not the most attractive tree. But if people you know, wanted to see it one last time, we could incorporate it there in the middle. Um, you know, we can try to make it work. If not, you know, we can put a new tree in you know, this year. Okay. Um, there is a property next to Paul Ray's that I'm has access. The Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. pretty. <laughs> it could be. It's a Freeman Grout and John Grout. Uh, I don't know who 12A. You have a red building there before you get to Mobile Acres. Mm -hmm. Right hand side, there's a bunch of trees there. Probably 30, 35. Like 35. There's some bigger ones, but they've all been trimmed and stuff yeah. like that. And they'll let us have as many trees as we yeah. want. They give it us access. Yeah, and Lou Stoles also, he's very yeah, much, he's, he's, been, some big ones. he's been donating them for the last two years since I've been here. Um, he's still going to donate some trees so we can, you know, alternate and stuff like that. He really enjoys it, and he's actually called me a few times, like, when are you coming out to pick the tree? <laughs> the um, and the stuff yeah, so we're right. going to incorporate right. yeah, the tree and stuff like that. So, so we've created a good, a fun tradition, so hopefully we can keep it going. One of the other items that um, Heidi also mentioned in our meeting was, uh, and incorporating incorporating the actual delivery of the tree yes, as part of the sorry. ceremony, so decorating the truck was something that, that you have mentioned. Uh, potentially decorating the truck and building a ceremony or, around the arrival of the tree, 
and then a second ceremony around the actual lighting of the tree. So mm -hmm. it helps us to spread out events uh, over the winter as opposed to just one and then nothing. So just more activities to provide for, for families. Um, you know, we don't know how many folks will show up for the arrival of the tree, but you know, a, a truck decorated with lights attracts attention and could be a reason to get people, people out. People like to see it, you know, coming and <laughs> yeah. well, it's a process in. to be able to stand it up oh, and yeah. put it there. So yeah. yeah. I'm excited. All right, well, guys, if you're excited, I'll make a motion to remove the tree so we can have a new one this year. <laughs> I didn't hear who you said provided the tree for the gazebo last year. Oh, the last two years, um, we actually didn't have the gazebo, we had it outside. Uh, Lou Stoll's farm, tree farm. From Brookfield. From Brookfield. Yeah. Stoll. Yeah. Oh, Stoll's, okay. Yeah, Lou. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. So when we take the tree down, we're going to be putting a sleeve in. Um, we're going to get some metal and adjust and we'll build it. Um, but the stump that's left there, that will the dig it out? Or can I bring my excavator to dig it out? Or how would you? Is that something we should coordinate with you? We do coordinate. Yeah. OK. Absolutely. All right. All right, yeah, because this is going to be something that we're probably going to get right on here sure. pretty quickly. So. Okay, I'll just coordinate with you. <laughs> 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 it's it's coming quickly, so we just got the, the tree and Justin Hunt, so you know, it's, it's probably yeah. going <laughs> 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 to be down by 10 minutes. I'll give it to me. It needs to be, so Matt can put it. Justin's over there waiting. Not good. Matt, you can be the one that does the coordinating. Yeah, I'll do that. I was thinking we could pay 500 to have it removed and then charge 700 for the wood. <laughs> yeah, two hundred. It's not worth money. No, and they were not going to work. No, you're not going to recoup everything on that. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Yes, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to a really fun event. Thank you. Great. Okay. Nice job. Peace agreement with Chandler. Yes, in your packets, uh, you'll have uh, uh, two existing agreements uh, that I have in my possession between the town and the Channel Center for the Performing Arts Incorporated. And um, uh, the reason for a request for the review of the lease is that we have uh, ongoing conversations with um, the Chandler Center for the Performing Arts Incorporated about repairs that are needed at the Chandler building. Uh, the lease itself does not specifically speak to uh, who is responsible for those particular repairs. Uh, our meetings have, have uh, reached the point where the board representatives uh, for the Channel Center for the Performing Arts, Inc. Incorporated have agreed to share with their board members at the next meeting on November 20th whether or not they would be willing to open up the existing lease for renegotiation. Uh, and then I also um, offer to bring that same request to this, this body so that you could provide direction on whether or not you would like to request that we renegotiate the existing lease. Okay. One of the issues with the existing lease is, is we see it uh, in a very literal sense um, and we shared with uh, the representatives from uh, the Chandler group is that under responsibilities it specifically mentions what the Chandler group um, uh, should perform for repairs. But when it comes to the town, it specifically mentions that insurance costs would be covered by the town. Uh, but every other type of repair uh, may be covered by the town, but we, as it, as it says, shall not be obligated to perform the repairs. <clears throat> so what are the repairs? There, there were several repairs. One we were recently notified of. The other two uh, we were no, uh, notified of uh, approximately a year ago and have not been able to perform the repairs because of the cost. Um, one is a leak uh, on the, the meeting room <coughs> side of the channel, the flat portion of it. Uh, and the other is a foundation leak on the 
northern side of the building near the laundromat. Um, the proposal that I believe have been shared with me, I haven't seen them, but uh, the proposals that have been verbally shared in terms of cost were upwards of $50,000? And counting. And counting. So 50 was the proposed amount. Um, and that included the caveat of, well, once we get in there, we may find other things. So it was just the roof? It was just the roof. 50000 plus, it's only a roof repair? What's the, the proposal really was for $46,000, but it didn't, it said, as Adolfo says, when they open it up, if they find damage, then it's it would go up yeah. from there depending on what the damage is. And what's the foundation estimate? There is no foundation. I proposed to Adolfo that we excavate because it's it, the in, interior of that large the hall goes at an angle and if you look at the side of the building it's probably only two feet down. I think it's the main timber that goes across the floor that I think the way they built it was they put it right through the foundation and let it sit on the foundation. Oh, he's sitting on it, yeah. But it's been compromised on the outside, so water's coming in where that beam goes through the foundation and ran that runs down because they put um, plastic all under that to keep the humidity down. Right. But it also makes the water that comes in to, from that leak follows the plastic and goes further. Right down to the dressing room, we had about four inches of water. Oh, God. Down, down in there, and uh, I had proposed that maybe we, either myself or somebody could dig a hole and take a look at what's going on with the foundation. And right now, there's no way to get an estimate on it because you don't know what the, what the problem is. And it's getting to the point now where a little bit late to be digging a hole in the ground. Yeah, a little tough now. But, so this is water that's running off the roof, goes back up against the foundation? Yeah, the, the, problem, the, yeah, the problem is, well, it's, it's it's two things. It's it's the fact that the water coming off the roof comes straight down and it's all gravel along that side. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's if it's like the rest of Randolph, it's all sand and it silt in there. Yeah. So it goes right straight through. And if there's a, a breach on the foundation, it might only take some ice and water shield or whatever, but I don't know that. Right. And You're not gonna know until you dig it up a little bit. I, yeah. And during the winter, ice comes off and it creates Mm -hmm. a mound and then the water, water flows the water side. it yeah. goes right back towards the, towards the foundation so uh, could could Michael would you talk a little bit about the roof because it's more than a repair of the roof what we just did yeah so one of the challenges that I would like to share with the board is that uh, we have had informal conversation well not formal conversations in terms of negotiating a new agreement but conversations with the Chandler group about some of the issues that exist with the existing lease, um, including who pays for these types of major repairs, um, in addition to some of the other items that are included in the lease, which is the existing Chandler group has uh, essentially a lifetime lease. They can renew it every 20 years for as long as they can choose. So one of my recommendations to them was to consider renegotiating the lease so that there's a way for the town to meet with them every five years and say, okay, these are some of the goals, it's changed, how about we have it take a different direction, or if there are financial troubles, we can figure out whether the issues are related to scheduling or related to the town, having a way to have that ongoing relationship as opposed to an indefinite lifetime agreement. Um, those are just one of the things that I pointed out to the group, and then the group pointed out to us was, well, we need these repairs, we need them taken care of, and the initial response from the town was, well, the lease doesn't say the town is responsible for those. So the Chandler Group is asking the town to volunteer to perform this work. Um, what so there's two issues, right? There's the heating, agreement and then there's this lease agreement yep. and the lease agreement basically leaves nobody responsible for major repairs right if that's the way you read though well that's the way i read the it lease. 
because it says. But the question is, is that the, the fact remains that the building belongs to the town. I would think that the town. Well, yeah, but we're not obligated to, right? We right. Could let it just sit there. Absolutely and right. Go I mean, the we, when the Chandler organization took over that building, I can attest to the fact I was not here when that happened, but there was a breach in the roof on the, in the main hall and it ruined a bunch of seats in there that I, that I repaired and re-laminated. So I know that, what, 20 years ago, that the town decided, hey, we're not going to take care of the building, and it deteriorated. And that's mm -hmm. my personal concern at this point in time. I think there's negotiation about, I, we all know, and me knowing, being on the budget committee, we don't have the money to do that. But I think the dialogue of what can be done, such as me volunteering to dig a hole, is the, the kind of negotiation that we need to have that doesn't have anything to do with how long the lease is. It's we, there are problems with that building that need to, need to be addressed. I'm not sitting here telling you how they need to be addressed, but I think there needs to be a co cooperation on how they're addressed. Mm -hmm. We have we have patched that roof a couple of times now. Now we could continue on to continue to patch it. Um, the unfortunate thing is that where that where the soft spot is is right where two roofs come together. So all the snow comes down there. My concern is is that you're going to get a load of snow come down there. It's it's going to end up in the Esther Mesh room. And then we really have a problem. In our previous meeting, representatives of the Chandler Group made this, the suggestion that the lease not be amended entirely, but only that an addendum be added that would define what major improvement is and that the town would be responsible for improvements of a certain amount and above. Um, I said to the group that I personally, without having shared this with the board, didn't agree with that because the town's concerns are not being addressed with the lease, but the concerns of the Chandler Group are being addressed by just adding an addendum to the existing lease. So my recommendation to the group was, again, that we go to our different bodies and then we ask to renegotiate the entire lease so that everyone can collaborate and build a new lease that works for the people that are in office now, as opposed to continuing with the lease that was drafted 20 years ago that one side may not necessarily feel as fair. It's got to be negotiated anyway soon because it's done in, 20, in February of 22. Well, except, except according to the lease, the, the really channelization can renew without input from the town. Well, then we still have the repair issue. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we're, so if we're talking about now about amendments to the lease and who's responsible for what, then I, I think it really does make sense for us to be looking at the lease as a whole and I thinking think a about lot of it. Because it has been 20 years and and having, you know, language, you know, set in stone in, you know, for the indefinite future, that, that just, that's just kind of crazy to have a, a lease that you can just renew over and over again. And times change, boards change. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes sense to have a, a contract which is, has no time limit. Well, I think this oil lease, this oil agreement is, could be interpreted multiple ways too. Yeah, well, that. it's not a. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I mean, they, the thing I never. The thing that I hear around the most, the biggest objection I hear from a lot of folks is the oil bill. I don't necessarily think. That, I don't think the repair situation is as much of a concern to folks as the oil seems to have been over the years. The oil thing pops up, <laughs> seems like year after year after year, you're more and more and more about the oil situation. So, my thoughts would be to. Basically, I think like Larry, you know, let's let's maybe we can figure out if we can work together and create a new lease that defines some of the repair issues and and <coughs> solves the oil thing here because that's the big thing I hear about. It's like everybody says, well, we pay all this oil bill just to use the building for once a year. Why aren't we going someplace else? So that's not quite the goal here because I don't think that the organization has the wherewithal to be able to cover the entire entire oil bill. And you know, I've said in a lot of these conversations, and so you know. Um, as we've, things as improve you, in the community, maybe things more people will come to more events at Chandler, and Chandler's 
situation well, will become more positive. If you've gone by the Chandler the last few days, and my understanding, and I wasn't there, there were over a thousand people in there on Halloween night. Yes, there was. I was there. And today, there were buses. Did they have a movie or something? I don't know what they had, but... Little engine that could with lots of school children right. coming in. And, they, and, the full, and the parking lot over at Bethany, Bethany was totally filled. So Karen Dillon, the executive director, is making an attempt to utilize that building. It's not necessarily by the town, and, but it's also not necessarily charged but to, to make sure that that building is, is used. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, you know, since the conversations we had back in the spring, I think there's been a tremendous amount of positive energy that's, that's moving forward there. And, you know, I think, you know, I was there for the Halloween event, and I thought it was amazing. I think you brought a lot of people probably into the building that hadn't been in the building before. Absolutely. Especially children. Yeah. You know, that probably never been in that building. I'd love to see kids so, playing and in you that. got a little you know, building. You've got that you know, you've got that group within the community now and some of your board members are now a little more active when it comes to that children component. So you've got some people that are doing oh, that. Oh, you mean so, they're younger. The younger if you're younger <laughs> board members. Okay, so what up? Okay, you know where I'm going with this. So yeah, you've got some newer younger board members that seem to be, you know, some revised energy here that's uh, you know, moving it forward. So I think that the goals of trying to get it to a, a point here where the community feels it's the community building is it, they're happening, I which agree. was not, I think, people didn't feel that way before. I so agree. I think that I that's agree. moving in that direction. It's a so, mix of programming that's going to pardon a mix of programming. Yes, yeah, so a mix of programming is, and, and those were the discussions we had oh. back, you know, whatever that was, June, July, I guess, when we were talking about those things. Between then and now, yeah. Right, and so I think. I'm seeing some positive efforts in that respect, and I think it's being seen within the community. So, as far as you know, kind of dealing with repairs and oil, sure, I think it's maybe time to you know look at the lease in general and see if we can, like you said, you know, language changes, things happen. So maybe there's a way to kind of smooth this out a little bit. I, I will I will tell you that it, my personal feeling I'm on the on the building committee. My personal feeling is there are, there are a lot of elements within that building. From a maintenance standpoint, that Chandler, the Chandler organization should take care of. It's that fine line between is it major or is it minor. I mean, mm -hmm. I've I've varnished all the doors on the front, and I repair have repaired a lot of the seats in the main hall, and I've fixed locks on the doors. I don't know how many times, and and but when you get down to a circulator valve on the on the furnace that's beyond your expertise. sticking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a question. Ron Wall has talk about, talked about pulling it out and, and doing one, but I think there might be legal ramifications yeah, in, into that. True. But maybe it's like cutting down the tree on the, over by the gazebo. We do it in the middle of the night. <laughs> Well, I'm not quite sure you want to do that, but <laughs> well, we so I think to give them permission to do it. <laughs> I just did a quick search, and it seems like there really is legal definition of major versus minor. So I'm not really in favor, personally, of the amendment to anything to add, because I think that's well defined, probably in law, what what a major repair is, it, and I, I the don't, obligation I get. I'm sorry, the obligation piece I get the the way it's written. It's, it's silly in this agreement, but if we are really leaning forward as a town and trying to keep the activities going out, yeah. You know, I mean, find, we got to find the funds, I get it, but it seems like this but would be I the right think, thing for us to do. But I think forward. it's in Chandler's best interest to want to come to the table and renegotiate this. So there is a clear line of their responsibility and the town's responsibility. So are there grant opportunities for some of this work? Uh, they, for, for the roof work, um, mm -hmm. we've we found... Are any of those organizations that are, you know, supportive of this kind of stuff, and historical mm -hmm. buildings and yes. those kind of things? Yes. Well, not that we've discussed, but there could be. So well, we, we had the conversation. Um, Cliff has, and you know more, more about the grant. It was Historic Preservation Grant? Preservation Trust. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, and Cliff has that proposal. The unfortunate thing is that it's, it's a matching grant, for $25,000, but the town would have to say, we've got $20,000, $25,000 to match that, and we don't have $25,000. Michael, that, the Preservation Trust Grant does not require matching. It, re it recommends matching, but doesn't require matching. Okay, she knows more about it than I do. So where I'm going with this is, you know, okay, so right now it's the roof. What's it gonna be in three years? 
you know, what would it be in five? So 100, 105 right. year so, old building. Right, it's exactly. So, you know, um, it would be nice, I think, to put a Band-Aid on this and see if we could get some, some, some grant money to maybe fix this problem, okay? And, you know, if that was to happen, I think, you know, that would probably that'd be a good thing, even if it was half of the money you needed. So instead of just making the commitment, going out and spending the 50 or, you know, or whatever, renegotiating the lease and we have to put in the 50 or somebody's got to find the money. So, um, you know, I'd like to investigate a little bit more of the, because I know there's money out there to fix these things. I've seen it happen. I don't think so you'll we hear spent, anybody. It seems to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in fixing up burns. Yeah. I don't think you'll hear any anyone in Chandler say, we're not going to apply for grants because no, no. we apply for grants all, all the, the time. time. That's and, right. And to us, that's the way we can support and help, you know, the town out. Yeah. So, if I could recommend to the board, I, I still do feel that if there was a change three or four or five years from now with a different board and a different manager and the position at that point is well much more literal and they say the town's not going to pay for anything because we don't have to it still leaves us in a position of staying with the old lease that won't help Chandler at that point and it won't help the town at that point and it would leave us in a place where the repairs are just not going to be made and that's if there's a complete change of the board and there's a new manager and they all think the same way and are going with what is in the lease so I, I I understand the hesitation from the Chandler group because of the benefits that are included in the existing lease, but there are also some negative downsides to it and not, not addressing those could, could be bigger problems down the road. I don't, I don't see why we should be able to create a new document that works well for everybody. Right. I, mean, I think that's totally possible. I, mean, I think we're all invested in wanting to see the success of this facility. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great community asset, so it's you just got to figure out how to take care it's of it and make asset. sure it works for everybody. But do we really need a lease that tells everybody who's responsible for it? It's our building, it's the town's building, and we have a choice. We can either let it fall down slowly, or we can try to mend things as we go along. And I don't see that it's super important. I, I look at the fact that the lease and the building are entirely two different things. Because I'd hate to see that building go back to the disrepair that it had before. And that doesn't take a lease to make that happen. That means coordination between Chandler and the town. But you gotta always look at these ventures with you're not going to be the one at the table 20 years from Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Who's and gonna be at the table and what if you laid for groundwork for them to follow? on how the relationship works and how things go together. At least in, in defining roles and responsibilities isn't always a bad thing. No, I understand, and that's the reason that I had written up an entire list of all the things that need to be done, maintenance, such as inspection of elevators and you know exit signs and extinguishers and all that stuff that nobody really sees, but we have been paying for. But to have a list call it a writer, I don't care what you do, but have an agreement that these are the things that Chandler will do on an ongoing basis. Because you Yeah, would... those are the responsibilities of that organization. So that's what I think Trina's saying is you need and some clear definition down. so that, you know, down the road you're not there fixing the locks, who's gonna fix the locks? Okay? So I just So the next time this happens and your roof's leaking, you right. can come with a lease to the town and say, look, this one's yours. Yeah, no, but then, but you, the unfortunate thing is, is that the town is going to say, but we don't have the money, and I, I fully understand that, and it, and that's the issue right now is, the cooperation between the town and Chandler to repair or fix or do something about water coming into the Esther Mushroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's where that conversation then goes. Pardon me. Okay, that's where that then goes. The conversation to like we need to prepare this it's 50 grand we don't have that much in the reserve fund but we have 20 what can we find for grant funds oh by the way can you apply for this grant absolutely and and i that i would feel very comfortable with that but i don't think that coming renegotiating the lease is dependent upon that because the real sticking point in here is the fact that 21 years ago somebody made it in perpetuity 
that is very difficult for the Chandler organization to walk away from because if you say, if you open that door, then it, you can say, oh, well, we'll make it a 10-year lease. And then the town will say, oh, if you're willing to negotiate on 10 years, maybe we'll make it two years. And that's not tenable to, uh, to us. So I would like to find a way of getting past the fact that there is a lease and how do we maintain the building in a cooperative manner. Well, right now what you do is you come to the town and you ask whoever's sitting at the table I did that. if they will <laughs> consider doing it because the lease says we don't have to do anything. It, are you capable right? of doing so, that or, or right. does the building just start leaking? So you're rolling the dice every time you have a major repair that way versus having a new lease that says this is the town's role. I'm, not, Chandler's I'm role. not rolling the, the dice though. That's the problem. I don't own the building. I can pick up my paper waste and go home anytime. The building belongs to you guys. Right, I'm, but Chandler you know, like is the an library. organization. It's not any different. It's not there. Pardon me? There is no Chandler organization if there's no building to have it in. And you then got you've it. Lost all I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. Nobody wants that. So it's just a matter of like, okay, what works for both sides? And it's called cooperation. <laughs> Larry's right. And, you know, that's but why you I think define that. And that's where defining some of the language feedback. here, and, and okay. making the the entities responsible for each portion that really falls under their jurisdiction, I think is fine. I don't think the taxpayers have a fine, have a problem saying, okay, look, we need to put money into the roof of the building. I mean, it's an asset in the community. You go to the taxpayers and say, look, we've got you know, we, we budgeted $25,000 this year and we're going to try to get a $25,000 bond. I don't think you're going to have a hard sell on that because what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling in the community is that it's starting to feel more like everybody's involved. That wasn't, when that wasn't happening, then you have the whole, you know, the comments about, well, why are we paying for the oil? Okay. I think that's getting fixed. And as long as what's going on continues to go on, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with it. I think it's. I think you're able to go and put it in the budget and say, "Hey, we need to make our major roof repair. It's no different than if you had to put a new furnace in the town garage." Okay. So I, so I think I agree with you, Perry, completely. But I, I guess Mark, Michael, Michael, Michael sorry, I, I'm kind of Michael. I don't see that there's the. I, I see the two things as mutually exclusive at this point. I think there is momentum there. I think the taxpayers are willing to pay, and I think the town should be responsible for fixing these major repairs. Negotiation of a lease, while maybe necessary. I think has nothing to do with, with the problem they're faced with today on those two issues. Right. And I think, you know, unless we want a major issue, a more major issue, I think we should find a way to take care of this in a collaborative way. I just don't, you know, we're, we're saying, well, you've got to renegotiate this. I, I, I'm kind of Michael, why would, if I was a business owner, why would I? I wouldn't, but at the same time, you got to sell to the town. I know, but if the momentum's there and you know the town was on board with this, what's changed from the town perspective here over, over the 21 years? Other than maybe the cost of oil, I understand cost of running things goes up. Yeah, things, yeah. But if they're maintaining the building and doing all this stuff and it does say major repairs, and the first thing you'll see as an example for a definition of a lot of major repairs, roof leak. But it doesn't right? say we will do them. I, I know, right? it says and not obligated. But, but, so, but, 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 you know. That's, well, a, that's a decision you that. make on any building that you own in town, right. whether, it's a, yeah. whether it's a town garage or... Right, it wouldn't matter. So I understand right. the perspective yeah, of the town so. and, and representing the town and the people, um, but this agreement was made in that perspective then, and, you know. I can't share two items with the board. I know this board, uh, this specific board in recent history has negotiated or requested that I negotiate two different points for, for contracts that were brought to the board. And, those points were to reduce the amount of time so that the, the, that the town eh, could go back to the person and say, okay, now you're costing us money, so it's not such a great deal for us to have this agreement in place and potentially have that leeway to renegotiate. Um, we don't have the ability with the existing lease. The existing leases, we could report problems to the Chandler board and they could just say, we'll fly a kite. We're here indefinitely and we're doing what we need to do and you know, everything else is kind of up to whatever it is that, that the board at that point decide. Um, I think that one of the consistent items that this board has done is to make sure that we have shorter time frames so that we could keep our partners accountable. And in this case, there really is no way for us to, 
to grow along with our partner. The, the agreement is there and our partner can say, no, we're not going to do that. In this case, yes, they're, they're in good faith. They're working with us and they have made uh, changes to the programming, but that's not to say that that'll continue in five years or in seven years or a hundred years. years. It didn't, or a hundred years. The difference is, is though those other instances of contracts either had expired or were <coughs> in a rougher negotiation. This one's not. Not yet. No, and there is one point that I did share with, with, uh, with the Chandler Group during our meeting was that this particular lease includes a um, mediation clause where if there is an issue between the two groups, they go to mediation and then if this issue isn't resolved, then there's an arbitration clause. So and that just costs all of us money. Yeah. So that's not you know, if there is there is a disagreement on, you know, who pays for what, the the existing lease does have But well, what's the disagreement on who pays what right now? On who is responsible for the payment. If the town is a roof repair? Of the roof repair. But I think I, I think, I think I think if you go yeah, I don't I'm not sure what the disagreement is. I think if you look at the definition of major repair, roof is no like I said, roof's number one. No, no, that, well, that's correct. That we may, but we're not obligated. No, to. I understand that's that part. But but what's the town going to do then? Let it well, fall. I'm not in. saying we let it fall in. I'm just saying it's not black and white that we have to pay for it. And if you want the building to be there, but I think that not obligated investment. was in there specifically for the reason of. If the town doesn't have funds at that point, mm -hmm. that's why it's not in that. Right? Because it was on the clause of where there, if insurance doesn't cover it, then the town is not obligated to cover it. They don't get it on. So the there's a lot of funds. things in the building that are not covered by insurance. That's the weird okay. thing about that that point in there because a, a small check valve on the heating system. There's no way you can buy insurance for no, that. No, that's all general maintenance. Yeah. It, which is covered in the lease agreement and is responsible, mm -hmm. Chandler, the Chandler group is responsible for that. But it doesn't specifically, it doesn't, it doesn't name the part, it doesn't give a, a an amount. If there, if there was an amount up to $1,000 or up to $5,000, whatever, but there's no guidance in that lease that will tell you what's major and what's minor. And, and that's why it'd be nice to renegotiate or come up with that kind of stuff in the lease that makes it more specific so there's no guessing, I guess, I, as to what would be the best way to put it. I tried to do that in the last in the last meeting, mm -hmm. and they, the general consensus was that that was getting the cart before the horse to have a list of all the things that needs to be done in the building, right from roof leaks down to Elevator maintenance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, why not? I think it'd be nice that. if it was spelled out. But it would be nice to know what those are, also for the capital budget planning. I can get you that list. Yeah. And and I think you will find it interesting. It's a big long list. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure it is. It's a, it's a big old building. If I can advise the board, I, I think one of the one of the reasons why one needs to have a, a very clear and concise agreement is. It's not for the times when we get along, it's for the times when we don't get along. And like the chair pointed out, if someone comes 10 years from now and says that there's this leak and it's, it's over 15, 10, $20,000 as defined under you know, major repair, then this group is responsible for it. Um, that is not in the agreement now, and I don't think it would be in the town's best interest to just add a rider and addendum to the existing agreement where it will essentially give a group at the table <coughs> what they would like and not necessarily give the taxpayers some of what they would like. And I understand that there's some gray area in here and the town ultimately does own the building, but there is a lease and the lease says something and us doing something voluntarily that is not necessarily spelled out in the lease is the town setting precedence. And it's now saying, well, if you paid for the last major repair, even though it's not in the lease, then the town may not have to be on the hook for the next major repair. Um, that's, you know, 50 different lawyers will interpret that a thousand different ways, but the reason why I would like to you know, recommend to the board that we ask for a renegotiated lease is so that we get rid of some of these inefficiencies in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And I'm not opposed to lease. Uh, renegotiation. I'm opposed to tying that to the building repairs that are currently needed. I think that lease negotiation is going to take a while, and that, that lease is going to I think, have more. I think, I think the lease negotiation will happen. 
I think we can at the twenty at the whenever this expires. Sure, we can because then we can go to the arbiter at that, that point. That's not my understanding. They put out the. If you read that language, I don't know who wrote it, but <laughs> it basically, it basically says they can that the Chandler group can 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 I, renew the lease at their discretion. But they can after do 20 nothing years. now, and we still have to repair that problem. <clears throat> all, all I'm all I'm saying is there's there's no incentive. Right now, for the Chandler Group to, Agreed. to negotiate the lease, regardless of things none. are fixed or not. Um, well, well not necessarily. I mean, technically, we don't have to do something. It's crazy for us not to do anything. That's what I mean. But, but it doesn't. We could not do something. And I don't right? understand how that affects them either way. Well, because then they don't have a building they can do their stuff in. So we'll go away. Right. I mean, it's, we're all I'm not we're saying all it's a good idea. I just we're said all it's volunteers. I know, but none of us get paid. That, I guess I'm not, <laughs> not understanding why Chandler wouldn't come back to the table and at least talk about it. How you make the relationship I think he said a it, better relationship. Any businessman that ha has a lease that was written 21 years ago that says in perpetuity, well, you'd have to be a pretty stupid businessman to neg renegotiate that. But all we however, have to do is however, we, however, we, we just have to move our town and we don't Chandler, pay the bill anymore. I mean, there's ways that financially it could impact and, you. And, Chandler, and Chandler's not really a business. Like you said, it's a group of volunteers. And if you want, if your vision for the future of that facility is that it maintains itself in a healthy way in perpetuity, it actually might not be a good idea for the Chandler Group to have no oversight from, in, from the town. But the oversight that we have, which you have seen in the past, is the attendance of people walking in and putting their butts in the seat. That's, that's the evaluation of whether that Chandler organization is effective or not. No, no, has, not gonna, nothing we're, we're, has nothing not, to do with the no, building or the Michael, roof. There's no it's impact true, whether there's nobody in those seats or whether they're full. Okay, but right? Perry. It's what, not true because because having been through this course and I've probably, you know, been here a long time and I know how that lease came to be and I know there was concerns about the oil. Um, there has, which I thought we were fixing, is this um, problem with the programming and I think we're changing the programming the programming seems to be reaching the entire community and that's why the seats are going to start getting filled is because you're not excluding a certain segment of the community which is what had been going on for quite a long time and I lived that myself back in high school okay and the story was is, you know there was a battle of bands there one time and after that Martha Lazen said they're never gonna be rock and roll in that place again Okay, so the programming and, and what happened, and you know, when the Hardigans were involved in, in for, forming this organization and bringing a lot of people to the community together to form this, okay, there was a big shift after they, they got pushed out of it. So that programming shift was not something that the community received well, and so therefore that's how come the oil bill became contentious. So I think that you know, renegotiating a lease would be a really good thing so that you don't end up with what currently happened so you know that's why I stepped up and said I'd be the select board liaison to this process because I think that the, the conversations were positive Pat was sitting in on here and I think we were moving in the right direction and you know and Sharon was right there we heard about it and I said you know we need to do a Halloween event and by default we got it and it was hugely <laughs> successful so you know that's where the community is going to end up sitting in the seats and I don't know how the Rusty Dewey's things made up because I actually had to be away, but how did, you, how did that go? Was it successful? So, so that's there was my... tractors in the downtown. And there was tractors in the downtown, right. So I think that it's the programming, and that's what brings the community back together, and that's what I think gives us the ability to go say to the community, yeah, we're going to support the roof repair. But I also think we need to kind of have a, a, a fairly... Um, uh, what do I want to say? A, a, a fairly comprehensive document that spells out who does what and how it works. And I think that would also build a lot of goodwill in the community if they knew that that was actually occurring. Because the 20 year old document has it creates some problems. So if we could clean it all up at once, I think we'd be in a better position. Okay, so now you got me I fired think it up. That triggered me. I have two too. comments. <laughs> One for each party. Nick uh, Cleveland, Nate Cleveland, Nate Cleveland. I'm sorry, made the comment that he wanted to see if he could get a capital assessment done, which would be a good long-term thing to have in our hands so we know how much it might cost and the time frame. 
think he was going to see if uh, Preservation Trust would help with that. I think that's something that I have. No I think you're absolutely right. I think no that, that would have been my next step is we really need to look at the whole building. Right. My, my second question is we have a bond on that building. So do we have an obligation to maintain that building with the bond? No. We, just, we have an obligation to pay back the bond. Yeah. We but just have an obligation to pay the bond back. That's it. There's that's no obligation to maintain yeah. the bond. We can build a bridge with a bond and then blow the bridge up after it's built. <laughs> they still got to pay the bond. Still pay the, bond. <laughs> the asset's not used as security for the bond, but the town is used. But I think the community has a moral obligation to take care of the building. That's that's why I'm asking. Well, but I think we need to agree. It's also in our own self interest. Huh? It's just in our own self interest. It is. I mean, you asset. need to take care of the asset. Exactly. So, I wonder if we can move on. Okay. Sure can. Well, can we continue the conversation? Well, we with can if the board thing. would like to direct me to continue speaking with with the, the Chandler organization uh, governing board. Uh, I know that they are also going to have this discussion about potentially having a discussion about reopening the lease on November twentieth. I don't think after you know hearing what Michael said, I don't think they will. Agree to renegotiate, which it isn't going to hurt them to come to the table and have the conversation. What comes out of it and the document that's developed is what they'll be make should be making their decision on. They shouldn't be closing the door on it before they even sit at the table and have the conversation. So I think it's worth our effort to encourage them to come to the table and see what type of document could be developed for both sides to benefit both sides. If in the end they don't agree to it. Can't say we didn't try. Do I, do I remember correctly in the last meeting that we had? Did somebody talk about the, the town putting together what their wants and needs of a lease would be, or am I dreaming that? We never got to that point um, because it, the, the point that Randy had made was that it was better to have a conversation with each of our boards before starting to have a conversation of negotiating. So I made a comment and said that I wasn't at the meeting to negotiate. I was just there to say, this is what the lease says and this is the letter of the lease. And so I think at that point, that's when Ramsey suggested, let's go to each other's boards and see how each other's boards feel about okay. this issue. So I'll keep working with, with the representatives from the Chandler group and report back to the board. Okay. And we can still continue the same meetings or? Absolutely, yeah, no, yeah. it'll still be the same meetings with, with Perry and, and Pat. Okay. Yeah. Feeling good about that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Lease agreement with Randolph Center Fire Association. Uh, this is part of uh, the ongoing conversation that the town has had with the Randolph Center Area Fire Association. Uh, it was started um, several months ago uh, by a request made from the town's insurance provider that we have a lease in place so that um, our insurance provider can actually provide coverage for the Randolph Center Area Fire Association's building. So, uh, this agreement that you have before you is the final version. It yes. has been accepted by the Randolph Center Fire Association. Uh, we met with them, Perry and I did. Um, and then I think we only went through five drafts after that meeting to get to the Only five. <laughs> I thought we were just changing every one, adding one thing. <laughs> no. Okay. It took a while. Well, good, for good for you. Good for you. We got five drafts. Okay. I think several of the items in here are favorable to both groups. Uh, but I think it's one of those agreements where I don't think any one group is happy with it, which makes it Perfect. A good agreement in that. <laughs> and everybody's equally unhappy. Everyone's equally, everybody's equally unhappy, right? Continue with it. I think they're happy with it. Yeah. The taxpayers will be happy because that's what they wanted. I think the most important portion of it is that it will allow us to have insurance coverage for not just the building itself, because the association is um, generously allowing us to operate out of that out of their building uh, as a fire station, and then also allow us to protect. The, the town's equipment and the town owned gear that's stored within that building. So, um, you know, it, it has taken quite some time, but I do feel that it is a, it is a private group that is taking a chance and allowing their building, their property to be used for the public good. So. Isn't yeah. that the whole point of the building? To be used that way? Well, yes. 
Instrumentality, but this actually does not address the. I know it doesn't. Well, I know it doesn't address the. This bill. is only but this is a to step us, to get to, there. Yeah, this is yeah. only to get us in compliance with passive for the insurance right. to carry right. on the building. But it's a but it's a positive step in the right direction. I think to get the taxpayers to give them their five-year tax stabilization. I know it's a bit of a sticky point, but there is still the issue of the actual fire truck itself. I was going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, we felt that... Fire trucks. Uh, fire, well, there's, yeah, but there's the one specifically that um, the registration of the actual truck itself. And so it's, it's just more of a matter that there are separate issues. This is more specifically to keep us on track with insurance, and the other could still be a part of an ongoing conversation. And the final one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the insurance will cover it because they're an additional insured party. That's right. Yeah, they would be additionally insured. So any fire-related events that happen at the building would be covered. The insurance would also cover the entire area surrounding it, including walking in and out of it. So. Same with the equipment. Same with the equipment. We cover everything as they would be recognized as an additional insured. I thought you said the, the, the matter of that truck being registered to the group and not to the town. What about the title? Okay. That it's the same, same thing. thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, it would be much more contentious. Okay. Yeah, I just point right there. Wasn't, I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. It never happened, but it was <laughs> Go back and fix it somehow. So then, this we need a vote to accept it and to authorize the vote for this time. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. And uh, Bobby Dimmick is the signature for the Bobby Dimmick is the president of the Randolph Center Fire Association. Tim Angel did the negotiating at the fire chief. And she moved all the drafts, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you for right. accepting that. Grant subagreement with Green Street Hill events. Uh, this is uh, a necessary step um, within the Borat Grant. Um, Borat Grant that was awarded to the town for the continuing outbuilding of our outdoor recreation economy. Um, we would need to partner with um, a subcontractor. And in this case, uh, the subcontractor would be Braintree Hill Events LLC, which is essentially uh, Zach Freeman, our partner uh, on this grant. Um, and if the board would agree that we could enter into this sub-agreement with Braintree Hill, then they could continue to do the work as prescribed in the board of Grant. <clears throat> Good to me. And in addition to this, we have had non-employee agreements that have been signed by, by Zach, um, other um, workers' compensation requirement documents through the state. So we're, we're making sure we're checking all of our boxes, including the one that requires a subgrant agreement. Zach is the one person involved. Mm -hmm. He's uh, yes, he's the person through Great Hill. It's a one one person shop. Yeah. They carry their own insurance, so we were able to partner with them. And we're all gonna hold his feet to the wire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm already on it. <laughs> yeah, well, I helped him write the grant, so I'm. Right, you know, so we need a motion to approve and to authorize it all for the time. I heard Larry was on the grant. So moved. <laughs> Say. All those in favor? Can I make a comment? Oh, that's been a comment. There's a time for the operator. Yeah, there's a time for the operator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, yeah, sub-ranching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll make that change. That's a change, yeah. Okay. Some sounds cool. Uh, yes, uh, I have been working with uh, Chief Taylor, uh, so has Cliff, our finance director. Um, we have informed him what the, the purchasing policy required, which is Anything below a certain amount would require two um, uh, cost estimates. We currently, at the moment, have one, and our chief is working on obtaining the second. Um, the existing budget within the East Randall Fire Department um, is insufficient to cover the piece of equipment. Uh, we have worked with the chief. He does absolutely feel it's necessary, so one of the uh, strategies that we had presented to him uh, two months ago was that we could potentially make this purchase through the fire equipment reserve fund because that was the nature of the equipment reserve fund that was set up by the voters several years ago. Um, we asked that he share that with the fire, uh, fire advisory so that they could then make a recommendation to the select board. Uh, the recommendation that um, was made was uh, one that was not to purchase the, uh, uh, the portable pump through um, the fire equipment reserve fund, but instead to potentially purchase it through general the general budget, uh, which would then require us to go into a deficit. Um, at this point, we still, through as administration, still feel that the purchase, because of the longevity of the item and the cost, still fits within the nature of fire equipment reserve fund. Um, and would like to present that to the board as an option. Why do they feel it should come from the general fund? Because there's some of them that feel that the reserve fund is only for trucks. For trucks. Okay. But it's not. But it's not. And we went back and looked at the history of it. It was not created. I thought it was to be used for necessary it should be expenditures like this. Capital purchases. Capital so purchase. Capital purchase has more, um, right. a useful life of more than more five than, years. More than five years. Yeah. Okay. In your packets, it did include meeting minutes from, on the second page, from town meeting 2006 when the fund was actually created. Mm -hmm. okay. I was not at the meeting, so I, I can't speak intelligently about the fund. No, I, I was, and, and, then, and yeah, um, so. all of the chiefs spoke up and said that you know, they believe that the reserve fund was for the truck. That was all their perspectives. But it's not. Let me go back and look at the history. And no, I, I understood. I talked, I'm just, to, I talked I'm just, to Tim about it. He's like, oh, well. <laughs> I just I, I think we share this with the board because I did feel it was important for you trying not to have a pump and we we felt that we had found an actual solution for for the issue which is you know we also wanted to make sure that fire advisory didn't feel like they were being sidestepped so we asked chief to share that with fire advisory during the meeting I never fully expected there was the, the response that we got from that meeting um, so, you know, I, my purpose was he, he expressed mm -hmm. a need and I said, let's fill it. We have the money right. for that, that item. Um, so you get, is there any sense that if it gets filled from this, it would I get set? Uh, I ended up having to travel to, oh, yeah, so Tuesday and Wednesday. I didn't go Tuesday meeting. Okay. The response so I, I got know. once I talked with Tim about that it wasn't just for trucks was, oh, that makes sense. Okay, so they don't. So I don't think anybody's going to fall on their sword for it. They, there is a they, bigger they, they, need, they need a pump. I mean, yeah, need pump, so is, you know they can't. They right now they cannot do what they need to do without it. Right. So okay. Well, so it sounds it's pretty simple. Right. It's not one hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's like. So do you need a motion? Yeah, motion for payment right now. Want to do it? Thousand a year for the truck. So we've got payments on. Yeah. 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 We'll move to authorize the expenditure of funds. It's so nicely written here. It is. Expenditure of funds from the Fire Equipment Reserve Fund for the purchase of a portal pump for the East Randolph Fire Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Request from the Attorney General on the opioid lawsuit. Uh, the Attorney General's office has sent out. Uh, 
several of these notices to the towns asking them to consider potentially participating in a class action lawsuit against opioid uh, pill manufacturers. Um, I did reach out to uh, Gifford Medical Center and the second page in your, in your packet for this particular item lists some of the items that or some of the, the tasks that have been created or some of the steps that have been taken by Gifford Medical to address the issue. Um, so we, but this doesn't require any action from us unless we don't want to be right. on the receiving end should they get a settlement. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, some towns are saying that if they go for it themselves, they're going to get a bigger slice of the pie, or they'll get additional money somehow. I'm just, yeah. No, no, you're, I can just see why it's not really a no-brainer, but I don't I mean, you're Burlington, that's one story, but maybe, you yeah. know. Well, even some smaller towns smaller are saying towns that, that they want to, because I was actually just reading this in the Herald today, they're saying that according to the formula that's being developed, um, Randolph would actually get a, a non-trivial sum of like $16,000, but some of the really small towns, um, the amounts of money involved are, are basically nothing, like right. you know, $10, you know, something like that. So When you, you look know, at the cost of even the law enforcement alone is more than $16,000, right, of what we're putting out. And right, but just in terms of what, the set, of, of what there might be from a potential settlement, um, it's... I, it seems like it's, kind of, it's actually kind of hard, yeah, kind of, kind of hard to know exactly. This whole thing just blows my mind, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I manufacture a, a tarp. Now, now somebody goes and wraps around their head and chokes themselves and kills themselves. Now I'm going to sue the tarp manufacturer. I think it's more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be suing the doctors and the people that distribute it freely, not the maker of the there was thing. there was apparent my understanding is that there were studies that were suppressed by the industry that showed that they were dangerous that they that they explicitly kept under wraps and so made the state. problem a lot worse similar to what yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so the doctors are prescribing it not not right. knowing not for ye for years doctors were and i remember because my wife was a nurse and she was 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 working as a med surge nurse during the, the years when a lot of this prescriptions were taken up, um, when they were writing more prescriptions, and the line was, if you're in pain, you shouldn't be in pain because we have medicines that, that deal with it and they're not addictive. And that was... Well, if they're thinking they're not addictive, it's one and thing, that, but I don't ever And that was, that was, that was the that. line. And so these medicines got used in huge numbers very, very, very quickly and caused a really big problem. Yeah. And um, so they, it just... I'm far from an expert on this. this. is all tangential knowledge I kind of glean from things, but, but it seems like there could is, certainly be some liability. Some of it's on the patient too. Oh, it's across. The, it's everything. It's, it's the patients. It's, it's the salespeople. It was everybody that was pushing. You know, the, the patients have less of a threshold for pain, so they want the drug, right? Yeah. And the and the doctors like, okay, it's, good, it's okay to prescribe it, and the salespeople are out there providing incentives to, to use the drug. Um, so there's a lot yeah. of people. Um, daily persistent. What's your, what's your take on this? Do you have a specific thought of whether this is something in the town we should just we should just let the class action go ahead with us and um, take the path of least resistance? Yeah, I, I wasn't. I was surprised that some of the items that were reported by by our local medical professionals were not a high quantity number. It wasn't like you know, a, like I think Harry had mentioned, like Burlington may have considerably higher number of issues related to this. I also reached out to the Sheriff's Department. We weren't able to collect the information from them, but just glancing over the last six months worth of reports that have been shared with the town, very few of them are related to, you know, this type of drug response. A lot of more traffic stops, a lot of more, you know, agency assists where somebody goes and knocks on their door and make sure they're okay, but not specifically related to, you know, we had 50 arrests because people were high on drugs or these type of things, so. I don't know that we coded them. No. We didn't collect the data, no. according to that, anticipating that this was going to be yeah. what we would see. So, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an option. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that, I wouldn't recommend that we participate in something that could be financial drain to the town, but if it's a potential upswing and it won't cost the town anything other than just participating in the state attorney general's mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. maybe we're participating. Right. 
Although I do believe that many of the settlements that may come could come in the form of grants, which we then would have to apply for anyways. And it may not necessarily help us directly because we would just be one of many places applying for, more money for a grant. But, but our alternative is to opt out, hire our own lawyers, and go for it. And if there's no, if we're not finding that there's a compelling, you know, case that we're that we're trying to find something to make us whole, yeah. then this seems like the obvious choice. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. you might get a little something out of it and it doesn't cost you much to get there. Yeah. I don't know that we've ever collected the data when to, to all these able, events were right, going to on be able to, to, know to be able to yeah. build a case. The right. right. So if we can't make a case then we're unlikely to, to succeed get in it. anything in addition to what we might get <laughs> without doing anything. We'll yeah. probably get more this way. That's what, I, we very well that's what I thought. Might end up on the positive side of this, or like you said, if there were grants, you might be able to, you know, make some grant for to assist Gifford into doing some of the programs mm -hmm. or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, speaking of grants, Preservation Trust of Vermont is a call condition assessment. Yes, this is a part of the grant that the board had previously approved called the Robert Sensaboro. Professor Poe grant to the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Peace Valley Community Group intends to use these funds to continue to assess the East Randolph right Hall. Uh, there is a, a matching component. Um, uh, Cliff has made recommendations for where the funds could come from. And it's not a sizable amount, but there were monies that were transferred from the East Valley Community Group. Uh, the, the previous iteration of the East Valley Community Group when it uh, donated the, the buildings to the town and we could potentially use some of those funds if the board agreed to allow us to do The allocation we already, we, we already had, we already allocated some money to, to, the, to the hall, correct? Uh, there was some monies that were allocated. But so this is this where you use it from? No, this would be from the transfer of monies that that group did to the town. Okay. Some of them were allocated for specific, for that specific purposes, one for a clock and one for... Right. Forget the other purpose one. I think just for the general hall operation. Okay. All right. This would be general hall operation. Yeah. The clock fund was pretty specific that it yeah. was to right. be used in the clock fund. Okay. Um, this assessment also is needed to gain access to more funding from the preservation trust to do the actual work mm -hmm. on the building. That's right. That's right. Off. And now that they have their, did they have they? How are they doing with their? village designation down there because that was another piece they needed to do right that is correct we've reached out to the state agency that handles the program we've asked them to come down and there are a couple of steps that need to happen one is to uh, come and just take a look at the village right uh, the second is to have a presentation in the community so that people will know what they're getting into um, and for our purposes it really is just checking boxes for right. them because we've already been a part of the program okay. and the community wants it so and it's also something that would be necessary for a potential business moving into the East Randolph Bay or interested in having access to any funds that are available to help right. them in their transition. So. so timeline for that in a couple months? Uh, I mean, unfortunately, yes. Uh, we have to have a site visit, we have to have the presentation, and then after that it's submitting the application, which okay. members of the East Valley Group have, have done because I, I, I asked them to help me with it and they, they completed it. Great. All right. So let's move on forward. So yeah. make a motion to approve this. <clears throat> All right, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, grant for East Valley Community uh, for the uh, Pump Preservation Trust. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Retrans Better Roads Grant Program. <laughs> uh, it's not in your package, but. Um, uh, this is a grant program that the town would like to apply for, which would help with our Bingo Road culvert. Um, there is a Category D to the grant, which is a maximum of $60,000. Um, uh, it would help us um, fix the dip. Fix the dip. Yeah. There are also other projects in town that could use the grant, so knowing that that's a priority, but the amount is you know, not quite exactly the, the amount that we would need to fix this project would like to ask the board to just authorize us to apply for the grant and then internally we can just decide which grant which project we can fund with this particular grant looking forward on other grants for the Beagle Road project. So the Beagle Road 
project we had the trans come in and inspect the culvert yeah. and the amount of the grant that we had for that already was how much it was 157,600 and change and what is the total estimate of that project the the initial estimate was 381,000 uh, we have since um, our I arrived we we've learned that there are potentially cheaper options and VTrans is helping us to identify less costly uh, repairs for that that culvert somewhere in the vicinity of 300,000 so it's reduction of $80,000 but again those those amounts can change if we redesign um, or create a new a new engineering schematic for the project or, but the estimate is that we could save money from the initial the initial engineering <coughs> But you're asking for us to go up to this grant and then use the funds for that project or other projects? Or another project. There is, unfortunately, there there are many projects that, you know, it's a, a must do. And, you know, internally we could work to see if, if this particular culvert will last a little bit longer. We can apply for the other must do project and hopefully have it funded. Um, again, this amount is $60,000. Although it would be nice to secure for the Bingo Road project, it's the drop in the bucket to the total amount that we would need. And where are the other? What's the other must-do project? The other is a similar cross drain, which is a uh, another essentially culvert. Um, and I don't recall where exactly it's located, but it's another culvert project that needs upgrading. We've had on that particular project that the location and the name eludes me at the time, but we have been engaged with. Um, Agency of Natural Resources Hydrology Department just to make sure that we know the size of the upgrade and not just continue without knowing that information. So this grant's just a general grant, you don't have to specify what grant? Well, uh, uh, we do have to specify when we apply, but I was hoping that the board would authorize just town staff to apply for it. Um, for any one of the projects that we could potentially fund, and then we would be very specific with the application. It's just the hope is to not peg us to one particular project in terms of staff, and then you do the first one you need to do first, right? Yeah, that's kind of where we're going here. Exactly. And you might be able to prolong the Beanville situation for a little while. Not too much well, not longer. Not too long, but not I mean, too but long. there's something else. This other one you're talking about would, that yeah. might be the priority. There's any structures grant that. Um, will become available, I believe, sometime next year. Mm -hmm. And that's similar to the grant that we had before, and we could reapply for it. Okay. That's going to give us, so the 157000 grant expired. Yeah. We don't right. have that money We right don't have now, that now. But we will have it. When we apply, we'll, we'll get that back. We'll get that back. So that, that's really not a variable in my mind. It, but the 60000 that you want to apply for would be a big boost in getting to that 300,000 number because yeah. that's going to get us to 220,000. Sure. I would think that would be the first priority. Yeah. And then if we can't pull that project off and bring it to construction in then the timeline, the then go yeah. for the other project. Okay. But give you from now until whenever this is due to yeah. figure out that right. timeline so you don't miss the opportunity for the grant. But yeah. at some point that, that uh, culvert's going to fail and we're going to be in tough shape. Yeah, yeah. well, then we've got to fix that. If we got to pay the full 300 ourselves. There's a lot of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So is it failing because of the traffic, or is it just... It's just, just old. And the, oh, didn't, isn't that one, one of the ones that failed in Irene, and was like fixed in a kind of... It washed out around it, it did. but yeah, the it culvert itself right. is... Right, but... Rotting. Oh, it's been there for like 30 years, 40 years, maybe. Okay. Yeah. It's also undersized. Yeah. Uh, current standards require it to be much bigger to support different types of weight, but the, the culvert itself that's in there now is broken and it's cracked and it's... You know, I assume there's more trucks going over that now than there used to be. Well, yes and no. There used to be trucks going to the landfill. No, I meant over the last 10 years. Well, that's when we were filling LED. the landfill. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. And we get trucks. You guys get tra it's, it's, I think it's the traffic situation is probably about the same, but I think the culvert just mm -hmm. keeps on getting older and older. We tried uh, submitting a claim for the most recent rainstorms from earlier this year, and we tried to get, we were very clear with FEMA in saying it was already on the schedule to be replaced. However, the storm 
may have accelerated that and caused the problem to get worse. And uh, they understood. They accepted our claim and they denied it for that particular <laughs> that particular site. But you know, we, yeah, I share that with you because we're we're, we're turning over every stone. We want to make sure that even if we had two years yeah. and we lost uh -huh. one, that we're going to seek that money. So. But it, to Trini's point, absolutely, the sixty thousand would be a huge bump to yeah, yeah. The, the, the other cost projects. Of, you know, so. Getting the engineering money that cost down was getting us closer. Yeah. I, I would not be disappointed if the board said, no, being no road. I would say, okay, absolutely. That'd be fine. <coughs> no. well, you can't let the thing fail, that's for sure. No, that's a critical. It's too important. It's a, it's a very important yeah. you know, quarter, it's a corridor there that's connecting a lot of stuff. Okay. okay. So, motion to authorize application. Someone. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those abstained? Various local hazard mitigation plan grant. Uh, again, I missed including this in your packets, but um, all municipalities that had previously applied for a local hazard uh, municipal plan um, were re added to an application for grant funding to update their local hazard municipal plan. Ours expires next year. So we received a notice um, earlier this month from the Department of Emergency Management saying, congratulations, you've been awarded a $7,500 grant to update your local hazard municipal plan. Um, we didn't apply for it. It was just an automatic renewal because we had we would apply for it five years ago. So if the board were to accept the grant, we could then use that $7,500 and change to update our local hazard mitigation plan. So local hazard mitigation plan, is this where we went around and asked every business about chemicals and contents of their business and whatnot to yeah. figure out fire services? What are they oh, we want this grant. <laughs> yeah, we need that. Yeah. Well, because things change. Well, get, that's part of our puzzle first. Right, maybe. exactly. I mean, you, then you get, yeah, businesses have come and gone and things are different. And the fire department should be doing that regardless. Well, well this sure helps. Have that. Right. Well, we know some. Okay. Motion, okay. motion to uh, accept that. Thank you. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's a, that's, a that's, a that's, a, that's a real no brainer right there. Library that's census that's equity fund. Uh, I thought we had included that. In, you did. Oh, we did. If it's in there, yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Two thousand dollars to help them. Um, census. With census. Yeah. Motion approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And it also includes um, an email message that I received from the back page of your packets that I received from EC Fibers representative that discusses the total wattage and cost of, uh, for their estimates um, for establishing these uh, pubs within, within Town Hall and one of our other buildings. Uh, the estimate that had been proposed um, was based on similar equipment that has been installed in other locations and roughly at about um, $118 per month, $112, $119. So um, it's still much, it's much higher than it had been initially proposed, as uh, mentioned by um, EC Fibers Rep, but it's still roughly about half of what we currently pay for internet costs here at Town Hall. Uh, and in addition, the, because of the sharing of inaccurate information, um, again, EC Fiber has indicated that they are more than willing to uh, hook up a second town building within the village to uh, their high-speed internet, which I think is a 200 megabytes upload, I believe. So. Um, 
It is, so they uh, agree to do that what you know, target building? Well, we, we do know that it would be town hall, and I, town know, hall that, and what else? I know that the, the village library, the library might get theirs. The huh? They get theirs through the state. The library gets theirs through the state, so, not the, so that's, I was going to say that's probably another big user. Yeah. They talked about free Wi Fi in the downtown. Yeah. Awesome. That is a part of, uh, I believe, one of, one of the uh, motivations is to install this equipment so that it could be a potential uh, source for free Wi Fi in the downtown. So could we allocate it to that? Because I think that's an important thing that's being discussed in the Economic Development Committee and R3, correct? So maybe this mm -hmm. is a way to get that site moving quicker? It could be a part of the agreement. Instead of having a second location, we could just say, well, have the second item as part of free Wi Fi in the village of Port <coughs> Walton. Yeah, because you're going to need. Equipment. How where do you house that? Yeah, where do you where do you, do you house it? Is the question. Where do you put it? Power. Well, that's what I'm saying. So this agreement. So, yeah. So could it be here? I know, I know one of the current free Wi-Fi plans involves multiple locations around town, some of which are supposed to be located in private structures, but there's a few places where they would like them ultimately to get permission from the town, um, and so I don't mm -hmm. know where the signal comes in. That then goes out to these different routers to form the, to, to form the little mesh the, network. Right, to make the network. Um, but, maybe, but if it does, but I don't even know if it comes in in a single spot or if each you know, separate router is getting, also getting its internet separately. But no, I think, it, if, I think it's if they're one, getting it from a single location and then kind of beaming it around. Well, I think that's what happens is one location then, and then. It, then maybe that is something that. we could. You don't think so? Your speeds will go way down when that happens. <laughs> Because, because well, we're not talking about free Wi-Fi to be like downloading and streaming on. We were talking about free Wi-Fi that was going to allow access to the town website. Oh, okay. Not, yeah. not to create a. You can't sit here and download movies. No, that's exactly what they're talking. I was gonna about. Say, huh? That's exactly yeah, I was gonna what say, the free downtown like, Wi-Fi is. You provide really? a Wi-Fi to people in town. It's a, a high-speed, <laughs> high open, <laughs> high <-speed> open <laughs> Yes, exactly. Oh, really? Because that's not well. No, well, that's uh, news yeah. to me. Because yeah. I was on the impression it was to host. The website for, you know, how we're going to connect to Randolph, and if you drive into town no, and this no, pops this is, up on your screen, it says you go, you are walking around downtown Randolph with your phone, and, and your ability you to watch a movie. Stream? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, I hadn't heard that part. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think you can more, do. I don't think you, you can do that. One, then, no. The one no, network, that has to be and then all those hops, because every hop costs. You, every hop, and just, everybody ends up through the same router at that point. Yeah, no, I didn't think that. Multiple lines, multiple hubs at that point would be surprised. Oh really? I can say that both the, um, this was a conversation I had with, uh, with Mike Chief Hildebrand at the village. I think he expressed interest in it. He didn't necessarily say yes, we want it, but he just, he was going to mull it over. And I have not revisited the issue with him. I know the sheriff's <coughs> department said that they could make use of higher speed internet, but at the same time, you know, they, they don't necessarily use it there as frequently as the Randolph Police Department did, so. And they may, you know, there could be, other options in the future, so. Um, so we have to commit to that now? Could we say we need to think about it? Um, we don't have to commit to the second location. Yeah, we don't have to commit. Exactly, that's so what, that can my, be my question. Could we just say we need to think about the second yeah. location? It'll take several months before this gets off yeah. the ground anyway, anyway. so um, <clears throat> if the board were to choose to accept this and then potentially say one of the options is town hall and the other pending, to be pending determined, to be determined we, could, we could do that. Yeah. I think we should do that. Yeah. Sure. Um, as, a, as an aside, I noticed um, come trucks laying, not laying, um, installing fiber optic cable on the utility poles up in my neighborhood. Yeah, um, they're there today, right? Um, I don't know if they were there today. Yeah, Who's up there? But, um, no, it's not Comcast. It's, no. it's, it's, it's like specifically a company that all they, what they do is install fiber That's optic cable. Fiber, so are they Useless cable enterprises. I can't remember who was on the truck. Yeah, yeah, was so I'm wondering. Under. I'm assuming that that's in preparation for this to go thing? along with this. Is that that with this is gonna supply. Well, lucky you. I wonder. Uh, well, this, see, I don't. I don't have any. Fibers doing the Somebody was installing there today. They were there. They started. I'm assuming it's EC Fiber. They started in front of us and came up by the cemetery. I've been meaning to contact someone who's in to find out like, for sure like what's that's really, if that's really what's going on and good for you. what the timetable would be. I've been waiting for this for so long time. Yeah. 
Well, I get to keep waiting. All right, so uh, what do you need from us to move this one forward? Uh, if the board doesn't have any changes, just a motion to accept the, the agreement with the second location to be determined. Authorize Adolfo to sign. Authorize me to sign. Authorize. So moved. There we go. That works really well. Second. All those <laughs> <laughs> in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Notice of violation 10 deadly. Um, this would be a, a verbal update. Um, we received, I received a communication from an attorney mentioning that they are representing the residents at 10 Dunley Street. Um, the attorney mentioned that they intended to appeal the claim of the unregistered vehicles and of someone living within the camper that is currently crossing into the right of way. Um, after communicating with our attorney, we determined that the appeal that was submitted to the town was not in accordance with what was in the letter sent to the property owners. Uh, however, rather than have a drawn out fight, that we accept that appeal um, on those particular items, which leaves everything else as an accepted violation, which is all the other debris that's on the property. So um, I felt comfortable with that. Um, it is a violation of the land use regulations, which will require a hearing from the, the DRB within 60 days. Um, and the only appeal at this point that our attorney says was received, again, was for the vehicles um, and the, the register, camper. Registered vehicles and the camper. Registered vehicles and the campers, everything else, everything else uh, constitutes a, a, a salvage yard, which is not permitted in the Randolph Village High Density District. So it has to go away. So we are still working on a strategy. We're still going to send a notice to the property owner and set a hearing as part of the DRB and notify them that you know this is a step that the town, according to the DRB, is going to take um, because they did appeal and there's a 60-day appeal window uh, according to the regulations. And then also we will notify the Department of Environmental Conservation that this has happened and that the property owners did not appeal the debris and potential contamination and that they should reevaluate the property from the state's perspective. So that's where we are with that property. I did also send a letter to the residents of 330 Hebert Hill Road um, for the instructions of the board. The letter was to just acknowledge that they had, you know, in good faith had done some cleanup, acknowledge that they um, are still being monitored and that we, we saw that some of the work is happening, but that also said that the board has chosen not to pursue any action at this time, but may choose to do uh, to in the future. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, again, for the board, that they knew that we appreciated their effort, but also that additional action can be taken in the future so that more things don't start showing up. How does it look up there? Does it get more things are starting to show up? I told them it's going backwards again. Okay. But they're working on them, so maybe it's okay. temporary. Well, there it is. And what is the rule? They're allowed to just take it and move it up behind their house so it's not visible? If they put a fence around wherever it is that they keep it and it's not visible, then yeah. it would be appropriate. Um, so that's really, I mean, they've done a lot of cleanup for sure, um, but they moved a lot of stuff just around the back. Around the back of the house. And well, maybe actually, on who owns that property? Probably right Miles. Probably <laughs> Miles. That was there for a while, but they moved some of it back. Yeah. But, Actually, I think I heard that they, that might happen, come to think of it. Okay. Uh, they actually never did appeal, so after 15 days, if the property owner doesn't appeal, then the violation becomes matter of fact, and so... It is definitely better than okay. it was. But you're going to have no... You're going to have no to send the dump trucks and the loaders up there just to get it. We'll continue, we'll keep pushing. And I'll keep my eye on that, that property, and there are a few others that we're going to also start you know, the, the process on, including on Everett Hill, and um, but I'll make sure to share that information with the board before we actually take those steps. Um, so you think maybe the rest of them will get the picture. We'll see what can we help. Okay, Economic Development Committee. So last time, last month when we met, they asked us to send them what their charge is. And that's the charge? Uh, it's a draft. It's a draft of the charge, so yes. I don't know if anybody 
yeah. has any comments or other things they want to add before we finalize it. I didn't know you wore glasses back until now. It's a more recent thing. Ooh, I'm in info. I've got my, my close up contact lenses in today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only a couple of weeks ago, the first time in my life I had that. Should have done a presentation on that back wall. Yeah, guys. Who's going to come and point sometime in your life? They're not going to work anymore. Am I in trouble? <laughs> no, no. If I if I if I put in my contact lenses that I use, like if I'm yeah. like, driving, you yeah. know, or I want to like actually see really well in the distance, I couldn't read. Yeah, I get it. I had them for a while. I had to give them up. I need to try focals. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That's what's coming. Okay. So I think that looks good. I'm just gonna go on to them and have them take a look at it. And what do you think? Right? They haven't seen that, right? That was just they haven't. No, right. I just so want to make sure we captured. I think we everybody's shoot it along to them and convey that to them and say, what do you think? Um, I can say that to some of the comments that were shared by the select board in the last meeting, we have asked the Economic Development Committee to review the existing policy for uh, uh, tax abatement uh, or tax stabilization so that we more actively involve them in the actual development of the town, ask them to review some of the policies and recommend changes for improvement. Um, they thought it was a great project. They, they want to make sure that they have tax stabilization agreements from other towns so that they could then incorporate some of the best practices that they have that into great. what we have here. So they're working on that now. Excuse me. Next up is other business. No other business. Uh, I, I do have a few items. I'll, I'll try to keep them brief. Um, we have had ongoing, sorry to that every time. We used to have an employee that always started their conversations with that and we went, oh. Mm -hmm. Other than again. One of the issues that has recently come up is uh, related to Act 250 and how the towns are involved and how they affect local communities. Um, it revolves around the interchange in, in, in Randolph at Exit 4. I called, uh, uh, wait, sent a request to the governor's office because I, I personally didn't fully understand Act 250 being relatively new to the state. They sent me over to the Act 250 general counsel who then explained the process to me. One of the issues that I identified and expressed as an issue to the general counsel, and we had a great conversation, he lives locally and I invited him to Chandler and a few other things. So. Um, one of the, the items that he had expressed to me was that the aesthetics criteria in the Act 250 process essentially allows any project to be reviewed by anyone. So for example, um, um, I know we have the farm development project happening for the Hotel Randolph, and, and I said, okay, so and after the attorney had explained to me the aesthetics portion, I said, okay, so for example, if I live in Burlington and I drive down I-89 and I know that there's a project happening and I'm I feel like I'm affected by the project at exit three, four, or five. Can I request party status? And the general counsel said yes. That anyone can request party status if they feel that they are affected by a project. So um, I felt that that was a problem. I don't believe that our regional planning commission may feel that that's a problem. I haven't approached them about it, but I do plan to and ask them how they feel about this particular criteria. I do know the governor's office is expected to potentially address certain issues with Act 250. Um, but uh, I wanted to share that with you because it could affect Randolph again in the future if we have other projects that are considered to be a uh, regional effect. Um, and do you have to be a resident? You don't have to be a resident. Anyone anyone who says that they you are affected. You could be driving to your ski house in Stowe. Mm -hmm. You can be offended by something. I was just wondering about somebody who may live in another state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can be a Massachusetts resident 
drive or New York one. So, or, yeah. so I do plan to also engage your state legislators about this particular issue because it does, it affects a town and a region by potentially someone who doesn't live in our region or our town. So, um, the other uh, the other thing is timelines for the end of the year, the budget process. We have two budget meetings that the board would have to schedule. Um, and if I don't know if the board was interested in scheduling those meetings now, uh, those are just to review the budget. Yeah, sorry. I'm no, I'm just full of good news today. And, uh, before, it has to be done before when? Uh, well, ideally by you know with December or early January, um, because the budget would then have to be approved by the board and then had a duly ward meeting and put forward for printing in the in the town report. But um, I think generally the board has had their meetings in December mm -hmm. um, and as late as early January. Uh, so we, we do have three upcoming meetings that I would like to point or share with the board and those three are part of the conversation oh. with the community about potentially switching the listers, treasurer and clerk from an uh, elected position to appointed position. Uh, we, we have a loose scheduled date of December 2nd, December 17th and January 7th um, and those dates um, you know, we have received confirmation from our current treasurer clerk that she's available to attend all of those. So if the board wanted to, we could have a budget meeting on those same days when people are already gathering. What time are you looking at doing those hearings? Uh, discussions? Uh, they haven't been publicized yet, but we're looking at 6.30. I'm checking with VTC about potentially using the Red School House for one of those meetings so that we could potentially encourage more attendance from Randolph Center and East Randolph. You but said it's December 17? Uh, December 2nd, December 17, and then also January 7th. January 7th. But those are just for for these conversations the board can choose to meet. Whatever. What's the January date? 7th. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Might not be here. Yeah, I'm gone the week of the 2nd and the 9th of December. Hopefully back on the 12th. I should be able to make any of those in the evening. Because they got 6 30, 6 30. Your availability time. Those look okay to me. So I'm good with anything through December up until the t after the 26th. So 26th through the 7th, I think I'm done. Okay. So after the 26th, you're available. After the 26th, I'm gone. Go oh, so before the 26th, so you're available. Anything before the 26th, I'm here yeah. throughout that period. He's requesting the 25th. Yeah, put it on the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> Evening at 6.30 would be fine. Okay. But we would need to do the budget meeting before yeah. so we were done by 6.30 for yeah. these, unless we ask those could go to 7. Yeah. And I could adjust the dates for the conversation. I, they haven't been publicized. We're still anything, anything one meeting, two meetings. Uh, we would have to have two, two, two meetings. Two meetings, right? Two and then meetings. you're going to combine something else with those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Discussion These with are the discussions with the public. Mm -hmm. Once I do those three yeah. positions. Okay. So. Okay, I can do a couple in December. As long as we had three members of the board, we'd have quorum and we could hold the meeting right. and. And you don't need me for yeah. some of that stuff. So. And then I could work the community conversations around the time that the board would choose to meet. Yeah, the regular select board meeting on the 12th. Has the budget committee and the capital committees met? Budget committee has met. They, they meet with Cliff monthly, the capital committee. I reached out to the committee chair and did not get a response, but they haven't. December 2nd might be a little unrealistic. Then you pushing it. So we're probably talking the December 17th and January 7th. Or I actually hadn't realized, um, and I should have, uh, Perry did mention the select board meeting on December 12th. The second meeting could be just before or after. That would be a long meeting day for the board, but it could be one of those days.
that Trini are already at December 2nd would be to be pushing it forward. <coughs> December 17th and January 7th work. If we do five to seven on the budget, mm -hmm. seven for the others, do we have enough? That works for you, Pat? I can do that. Um, that work for you? 17, I can do that. Okay. Heather, no, no. And January 7th? Is that too far? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with the 17th and the 7th. Okay. Starting at 5, going to 7 on budget, and then 7 for the discussions. Okay. And the other. The other dates are just, as, just a reminder that this year town meeting will be uh, on leap year or leap year day, February 29th, for the voters of last year. It was. And we would Saturday. do the Saturday before town meeting day. So the actual town meeting portion of it will be held on February 29th. Uh, and the Australian ballot portion will still be held on March 3rd, which is uh, prescribed by state law. And at the next meeting of the board, I plan to put on the agenda if, if the board was okay with this. Um, the selection of the photo for the town report, uh, the dedication uh, of the town report, and a request uh, to ask one of the board members to write the message from the select board to be included in the town report. So we also have to have the hearing on the budget that we usually do the night before yep. town meeting, which we make it a Friday night, but it doesn't have to be the night before. Mm -hmm. So those of us that don't like Friday night meetings. We <laughs> took the 22nd, you're right. Um, anywhere between the 22nd, which I believe is a Saturday, through, like Trini mentioned, the night before Friday night. Of the uh, the informational budget meeting. Have a preference. I'm sorry. What was that? This is the meeting that nobody comes to. Right. We'll talk about the I'm, budget. I'm sorry, but did someone suggest a time for that? Uh, it's got to be some day between the 22nd and 28th. February. Somewhere between the 22nd and 28th. Huh? Uh, I'm not sure that's too far ahead for me to figure out. It won't be an early meeting, like 5.30. It won't be a lot of fun anyways. I think last year it was 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. Could you have it at 5.30 though, or is that too early? I think we could have it at noon. It wouldn't make any difference on attendance to take the truth. <laughs> I think I've been the only person to several of those meetings. Well, who will be there this time? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> one less person. <laughs> Maybe we'll have nobody in attendance this time. <laughs> oh, all right. Any <coughs> day make yeah, do it on people happier? Do it Thursday or I don't know. Five, <clears throat> it's just not a Friday. No, it's not a Friday. No. It's not Friday before, so it's like, I don't know, whatever. We have to determine that now, or you? We don't have to, but we're scheduled kind of, the rest kind of, of it. schedule so. the rest of it. So we'll yeah, I think Monday, Monday is training night, 22nd, is it 23rd, 24th? We go to 27th. It's 27th is a Thursday, maybe that might be the better. February 27th at 530. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody can give up 10 minutes? Sure. <clears throat> I won't be able to do that, but if I'm here on the 27th. So you're not going to miss much. I don't think I'll miss much, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> as long as, you can phone you as long as the three of you guys can do it, then, yeah. <laughs> then I'm going to worry about it. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we don't schedule something and you're like, wait. <laughs> First year basketball playoff gets scheduled that Monday, so. 
24. Okay. Uh, Eight. Good to be here to answer all the questions, anyways. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Uh, there are really uh, two more things. One is, uh, well, there are a few more, but I'll just not report them this time. <laughs> It hasn't been quick. Sorry. Because now we got the dollar over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious about what that's about. Um, one is we are, uh, tomorrow we're having a meeting to get started with our income survey of the water district. Um, we are working with RCAP Solutions, which is a consulting firm that has agreed to do it for free. And that income survey is necessary for applying for CDBG grant and USDA grants for upgrades to the water system. And these grants would, um, would be, if we are successful, would be added to the half million that we received for upgrading our water system, which is the wells and the reservoir. So we are gonna have a meeting internally, staff-wise, tomorrow to split up duties on what uh, RCAP Solutions needs from us locally so that they can continue with the income survey. And the last thing is uh, uh, our ACDC recently presented an award to Perry and Lynn for their mm -hmm. contribution, so I wanted to mention to the board that one of the board members was presented with an award. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. That's it. That's quick. Let's take a round of beer, by the way. Yeah. Picture on the front of the paper. Yeah. A round of beers? You think? It is. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> join me in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, that's right. You guys have that right here in the paper, yeah. Next meeting? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Now we have uh, executive session. Mm -hmm. Just making a move into executive session. And do we include anybody in this one? Adolfo. With Adolfo. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.